channel. This is a really important week for us. We have yet another awesome guest, really interesting guest with us today. I think you guys are really going to like this video. I'm here at BD Provisions in Newtown, Connecticut, and I'm here with co-owner John Bacuzzi. Hi, how are you? I'm awesome. Thanks Thank you so much. so much for having me here. This is really great. Appreciate you have a beautiful it. store. Um, so we're going to do a very quick interview with John and then uh, co-owner Tara, and I'll show you guys the place. So, John, why don't you tell me just a little bit about the inspiration behind sure. BD Provisions. First of all, what is BD Provisions? What does that mean? So, BD Provisions, the whole idea is uh, the B is for Bukutsi, the uh -huh. D is for uh, De Pippa, and those are the two founding families. And uh, a little over a year ago, my wife and I were on vacation, and we saw uh, a bulk food store. And we were very inspired by the idea of less packaging, less waste. And we came back and talked to the De Pippas, who are friends of ours. Okay. And they instantly fell in love with the idea. Were we on vacation together at the time? No, we were, ironically. But now we'll be vacationing a lot together. Um, and uh, we weren't at the time. And um, within a couple months, we had our business plan done and our real estate picked out. And uh, we were off and running and got our roaster uh, built and everything else. So wow. it happened very quickly. Yeah. In less than nine months, we were off and running. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So what would you like to highlight about your store for us today? Yeah, I think one of the really important things about our store is that um, one of the things that we feature here is that everything that we do is, is really uh, back to the basics. And one of the things we're very proud of is we have a Dietrich Roaster here, which is made here in America, in Idaho. That's impressive. And yeah, it's really incredible. And what's great about the Dietrich Roaster, it's a very unique roaster in that it actually allows you to roast coffee, not only through heat through um, the oven uh, around the roaster itself, but also through airflow, which is a very unique feature of our roaster. And uh, we've got a lot of unique uh, coffees that we roast. One of our highlights and our number one seller is our Midnight Joe coffee. And this is a combination, it's actually named after my uncle, uh, uh, Joe Bacuzzi. Uh Midnight Joe was his name, a nickname, because he drank coffee 24 seven. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the afternoon, didn't matter, always had a cup of Joe. So we named the coffee after him, and it's a Brazilian, a Colombian, and an Indian coffee that we brought together for the perfect cup of coffee. And has he tried it? Customers love it. He hasn't tried it. No, he, he, uh, he passed, unfortunately. Oh. But yeah, no, it's okay. It's all good. So this is him living on in, in a story, and his family absolutely loves it, and everybody loves it. So yeah, very proud. But all his children have had it, So every, even people in Ireland. <laughs> um, yeah, then our, our, some other things that are unique about us is that's that, great. Yeah, you know, we guys, have, I um, yeah, I want you to smell this one. This actually is a Peruvian coffee, and just smell the depth of that. It's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? And yeah. the bean size, what's really nice about this is a couple things. One is it's fair trade, and what that means is that people get paid a fair wage. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is that it's um, organic. And finally, the part I'm most proud of, it's 100% owned by women, this farm. That's cool. So, you know, we want to find not only amazing tasting coffees, but find coffees that have a story to them um, that we can be proud of, that we're helping somebody else in, the, in a community somewhere um, that may need it. And so this is one example of that. We've also got some beautiful Ethiopian coffees. And um, what's nice about this coffee here is this is what's called a natural coffee. You smell the fruit? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the fruit is coming, actually. The first thing you roast out of coffee is fruit, but what we do is we light roast this coffee, and the reason why it's so fruity is a natural coffee means that they actually dry the cherry on the bean and let it dry in the sun and then husk it. Now, smell this coffee. This is from the same region of Ethiopia. It's beautiful. But more earthy, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so more of a traditional coffee, and the reason why is because this is more traditional of what they call washed. They wash the bean, and then they dry the bean in the sun. So those are the differences between, you know, two, same region, but two different processes. So not only is it the roaster and how we roast our coffee, but it's the process of how it's dried or how it's prepared. So a lot of fun stories around this. Yeah, I, I, I smell this toasted oh coconut. This was amazing. Yeah, toasted coconut. We have both regular toasted, and we also have more, um, what we call um, our decaf Swiss water process. So Swiss water process is really incredible because most uh, decaffeination is done with chemicals. And Swiss water process, some really smart person, not me, came up with this idea of creating a, um, a, a liquid that actually is missing the molecule of caffeine, caffeine. They pressurize the beans with the liquid and the caffeine pops out of the coffee and into the liquid to fill that spot, the molecule location. Wow. I mean, that's pretty sophisticated. Yeah. So this is a very natural approach to, um, to decaffeination, and customers appreciate that. Yeah. We've also got a gorgeous Guatemala in here uh, that people absolutely love. And again, every bean we've found uh, roasting, this is an art 
and the science. You smell the depth of that, right? Absolutely. So the art and the science. So what we do with the roaster is, you know, we create the formula with the art and then the science by utilizing a computer on the back end, we actually can replicate that coffee every time. Wow. So every time I can actually make, make sure that that Guatemalan is gonna be the same exact experience each and every time. Cool. And why that's important is we're looking to franchise and when we go to franchise, we want to make sure that our franchisees can make the same midnight Joe 100 miles from here, 300 right. miles from here, 1,000 miles from here. Right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Fun stuff. This is a really cool machine. Isn't it incredible? Yeah. Is yeah. it hard to learn? Uh, there's, a, there's a, it's a little bit of a process, yeah. but the, it's, again, once you get the computer, you know, programmed, everything else is, uh, is you know, it get electronic. The nice thing again is this is all handcrafted right here in America. So I've, I got to go out and actually see them weld uh, the cooling bin, wow. you know, and watch them make this roller. So it was, it was incredible. The pride that went into making the machine was uh, pretty inspirational. So we're very proud of this machine. This is kind of where, you know, you go in and you kind of like, you want to look at the beads and, and smell them and taste, you know, make sure they're, they're coming out the way you want them. Mm -hmm. Any questions on uh, Well, that's, that's really, that was my main question is how, how, how long would it take me to learn how to... I could teach you in I could teach you in a couple hours. I could teach you in a couple hours. Now the art part of it that might take a couple days, but a couple hours I could teach you how to do the computer part of it for sure. That's great. Yeah, John. it's a lot of fun. So um, before we take it over to Tara, yeah. is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, thank you. I appreciate you coming out and taking time to learn about our store. The whole idea is, you know, we are really about the low waste. Um, okay. And just helping people. It's important uh, that he said low waste people. Yeah. Low waste. Low waste. <laughs> not zero yet. Perfect. Yeah, we're not perfect. We're authentic. Exactly. And uh, and we're really we're very proud of that. Um, you know, we have a, a saying: nourishing of the community and the environment, one scoop at a time. And that means a lot to us. So, like even at Christmas, for the whole month of December, we donated all our hot coffee sales mm -hmm. to the local food pantry. Awesome. And it was over five hundred dollars. And so, part of this mission of this store is not only helping people learn about low waste, but just making sure the community is healthy. Yeah. And because uh, if you don't have a healthy community, it makes it a lot harder to have a healthy environment yeah. and vice versa. I agree. All right. Thank you so much, Rich. Appreciate no, it. Thank you. Take care. It's from Vermont, but what they do is they actually bring it down to Litchfield County in Connecticut and they age it in a bourbon barrel in Litchfield County cool. um, to get a bourbon flavor. And I want you to just try this sure. and just experience it. So customers can come in, they can grab a jar here or they can pour their own. It's not alcoholic. Right? Not alcoholic. No, no, you won't get a buzz. That's amazing. Isn't that incredible? So weird. It's one and a pancakes, pork, it doesn't matter, but you can utilize it for so many different yeah. reasons. What, is, what does it taste like? It's very subtle. Um, it doesn't, it, you know when you have um, like a rum ice cream and sometimes there's too much alcohol in it, this stays true to the maple syrup flavor, but you just get a hint of something. And if he hadn't told me that it was bourbon, I would just be like, oh, this is really amazing. There's something different about this, but that's it. That's right. awesome. Yeah. I like it. And the nice thing too is that these bourbon barrels, once they get the bourbon barrels back, the Litchfield County um, actually utilizes them to make bourbon again with a maple syrup flavor, natural. And then when they're no good anymore, they actually turn them into furniture. So it's totally upcycling the barrels. So yeah. it's a whole idea again is we're not perfect, but if we can get the most out of every resource, that's really important to us. Okay, awesome. Great, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, good. All right, guys, so that was part one of our trip to BD Provisions. There we were talking with John Bacuzzi. In part two, we're going to be talking to co-owner Tara De Pippa, who's going to tell us about the logistics of shopping at their awesome, awesome store. So if you're interested, please click on part two, and I will see you there.